Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is creating web pages, adding images. So this is going to be part of a continuing series where we take a look at how to add different elements to our web pages. Previously, we saw how to create links between our web pages, and that's certainly critical because, as we've talked about, the thing that really makes the web the web is that hypertext. And so if you've watched those videos, you now know how to do that. But while those links are great, our, if all our web pages have on them is text, that's going to be pretty boring. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to add images to our web pages. It turns out that there's a fair number of options and some subtleties here, which may not be obvious. So we're going to go through the different options and how to get everything to fit together. I'm going to start off with this uh, image from Venice that you've seen previously from the first week. And this is mostly going to be our, our uh, example image, although there are a couple images we'll see along the way. Okay, so here's how you're going to add the image to your web page. Um, there's an IMG tag. Uh, notice that the closing slash at the end of the IMG tag indicates this is a standalone tag. There is no start and end tag. And there's an SRC property or source property. This is a URL, um, and it can be a relative or an absolute reference. Um, I'm using a relative reference, which you'll recall from our discussion on links, means that this venice.jpg image file is in the same location as the HTML file that um, is referring to it. And then you're supposed to have an alt tag. Alt tag is information used for a variety of different purposes, most notably to uh, increase accessibility by those who um, may not be able to see your web page um, and are using screen readers, which read the web page to them instead of viewing the web page. It is required. If you do not have an alt tag, um, you will have an illegal HTML file. Okay, so uh, just using the IMG tag as shown here, this will put the image on the web page. But the next question is, how does this image relate to the text around it? And this is where things get a little bit messy. So what I've done here is I've added some extra text here. So this IMG tag and the text, that is all um, in my HTML source file. Uh, as far as the lorem ipsum goes here, this is uh, randomized text from Cicero's On the Ends of Good and Evil, and it's commonly used as placeholder text for design work. So you'll see this in a fair number of places if you start trying to learn how to do design. And so we're just gonna go ahead with this traditional uh, traditional random text. Okay, let's take a closer look at our web page here. If you look down um, in our zoomed in view here and look at the relationship between the image and the text, you'll see that the text comes down not below the image, but actually alongside the image. So this looks a little bit odd. And I think the, the way I like describing it is it's as if the image were a giant letter. So like, let's say you wanted to have a giant L there. This is what the image is doing. So we're going to use the letter O, and uh, here's a diagram where I created a giant O. And you know, you've all probably seen those fairy tales where they've got once upon a time and that O is really big. And so here's my big O here. And then if I go ahead and have that IMG tag followed by the once upon a time, you can see that this image acts as a gigantic O. So as I suggested, it's like the image acts as a gigantic character. And just to emphasize that this is not something that just occurs at the beginning of a line. Here, I've used my image in two places, and you can see that each time my image has ended up looking like a gigantic O in the middle of our line of text. So this is probably not what you want. So let's go back to our uh, Venice image here, and we're gonna try and correct this. There's a couple different options. Um, I think one of the more interesting ones that you are likely to need if you've got a um, web page of, of any complexity is something called float. Okay, so let's go let's go back to our uh, image of Venice here. Um, I'm going to start using some style rules for how to control how Venice our Venice image is appearing on the web page. The first thing I need to do, though, in order to get this to work is I need to add an ID to Venice. So let's go ahead and do that. I could also use a class. I suppose I could write a rule that applied to all image tags. You remember we had those type selectors. So I could write a type selector that applied to all images. 
uh, but that may not be the best option. Uh, we'll have a separate video where I, I go over a, an extensive example and we can talk about these different options. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and give my IMG tag an ID. I'm also gonna increase the number of paragraphs of Ipsum lores just so we've got a little bit more interesting text to work with. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a style rule for the Venice ID here. So remember that's the number sign Venice to use an ID selector, whereas if it were a class selector, I would use the dot. Um, and then I'm gonna use this new style property we haven't seen before called float. And as you can see here, float floats the image to the left side of the web page and the text flows alongside of it. It's quite different than what we saw before a minute ago where the image was acting as a gigantic character. Now it's clearly an image floated to the left side of our web page. And so, as I mentioned a little earlier, this is a great technique um, that you can use on a lot of different web pages. And then of course, there's a float right that moves the image to the right. So one issue that comes up is where does the image actually appear? And what you need to do here is you need to list the image before the text you want to flow alongside of it. Previously, I listed the image first, followed by the paragraphs, and that put the image alongside the very first paragraph. Again, the first paragraph was listed below the image in the actual HTML source. Now I'm gonna move the paragraphs so I have the first paragraph before the image and then the second paragraph after the image tag. And so you can see that I've done that here. And when we look at the result, you can see that sure enough, the image floats alongside the second paragraph because the image appears before the second paragraph. So remember, image needs to be listed before the text it's gonna float alongside. And then we can actually stick the image in the middle of the paragraph as well. And so here, that's what I've done here. You can see I've got the paragraph and I've sort of highlighted where the paragraph starts and ends. And um, let's take a look at that word there. I have no idea how to pronounce Latin, but I'm gonna claim it looks, it says duis. Uh, that appears immediately after the IMG tag. And if we look at our image, you can see that sure enough, that word appears roughly after the start of the image. So basically, the web browser is trying to get it as close as possible to the image without having a huge, massive blank space there. So you can kind of play around with it, but it it, it does seem like, um, I know many students find this behavior a little bit odd. Just remember, you want to have that IMG tag before whatever you want alongside of the image. All right, let's go ahead and take this back to our first uh, example where we did the float left. Now, if we're looking at the float left here and we look at what the web page actually looks like, you'll notice that there's an awful lot of crowding between the photo and those words, larm ipsum. That clearly does not look right. We really want some space there. And we can go ahead and do that by adding a margin. So here I've added a margin of 15 pixels, and this actually gives us space on the right where we were really noticing we have a problem. It's a little hard to see, but there's also space on the left side of the photo and on the top and the bottom of the photo. So when we say margin 15 pixels, we're saying put a margin around the entire image on the top, bottom, left, and right. We can control this individually as well if we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the margin on the right to 30 pixels. I'm getting rid of the overall margin. So my 15 pixels on the top, bottom, and left are gone. It's a little harder to tell that the top and bottom are gone. I think if you look closely, you can kind of tell that the 15 pixels is gone on the left. There is a little bit of slight space still left there by the web browser. Um, and so the basic point here is I can control each of the four margins individually. Notice that the way it works is margin dash followed by the specific margin as opposed to left margin, right margin. It's margin right, margin left, margin top, margin bottom. Okay, turns out that margins are just one of several different properties related to what are called box properties. Box properties allow me to put boxes around elements. Um, and so the box properties are the margin, the border, which we'll take a look at in a minute, and then the padding. These work not only on images, but on any block level element. So if you wanna put a margin, a border, and a padding around a paragraph, you totally can do that. And in fact, this can give you some nice effects. So for example, if you've got a block quote, 
and you want to float that and put a margin around it, that is totally doable. All right, so let's take a close look at our border, our padding, and our margin. In this example, I've set border, padding, and margin. I've set a 10 pixel solid blue border, a 10 pixel padding, and a 20 pixel um, margin. And okay, the border's pretty obvious, although it's going to turn out there's a bunch of subtleties to that. Um, what's the padding? The padding is the space between the image or whatever element that you're using the box properties on between the image and the border. And then the margin is the space between the border and whatever surrounds the image. All right, let's take a close look at the border. Uh, as I mentioned, this, this has a little bit of subtleties to it. Okay, I've combined three different properties here into a single line, um, but we can actually separate border 10 pixel solid blue into three individual properties. Border width, 10 pixels, border style, solid, border color, blue. Border width and border color are pretty obvious. Um, the solid, you can sort of work that out, like that's a solid border, okay, sure. Um, so there's actually a whole bunch of settings for border styles. Let me just really briefly mention two. You can have a dashed line. You can have a dotted line. Mostly what I want to emphasize here, though, is you need to have a border style. Oddly, the default border style is none. So if you say, hey, I want a border that's 10 pixels in blue, the web browser is going to be like, I'm sorry. That's great you want that. I'm not displaying a border because the default border style is none. So you have a non-existent 10 pixel blue border. Have fun with it. So remember to have that border style solid or the fancier options like dashed or dotted, whatever. But you do need to have a border style. If you just provide a color and a width, you will get nothing. It's super annoying. All right, let's look at our other options here. So I've been floating the image. Um, that works great for a lot of purposes, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want the image to show up by itself with paragraphs above and below it. Well, the first thing to remember is let's go back to our original attempt to just stick an image onto our web page um, before we did the float. Okay, remember, this is what we got. We're treated as a giant character. Okay, that's not what we want. Um, one possible solution here is one of the issues why this is being treated as giant character is because the text following the image is not in a block tag. So if we go ahead and put our paragraphs into paragraph block tags, then we can go ahead and get this effect here. I've got a paragraph before the image. I've got a paragraph after the image. The paragraphs are explicitly blocks. And then between the two blocks, I get the image. And this seems to be what I want. Um, but there are a couple of problems. Uh, but before I move off of that, notice I've gotten rid of the style here and I've got that slash asterisk no style use slash asterisk. Well, what the heck is that? Well, obviously part one, I'm trying to tell you, yeah, I'm not forgetting the style sheet. There is a style sheet there and there is no style used. But the question is like, what is this slash star stuff? This is what it's referred to as a comment. This will show up in HTML, it will show up in our style sheets, and in particular, it will show up in our um, coding when we're actually coding. You will often want to put a comment there that's only readable by a human and is not actually processed by the computer. So this slash star no style use, that is strictly for you as a human being. Uh, as far as if this were actually in a cascading style sheet, the computer would be like, eh, I'm not paying attention to that. That's for a human. I'm not a human. I'm a computer. All right, so I've got the paragraph before, I've got the IMG tag, I've got the paragraph after, and as we can see on our uh, screenshot on the left, this seems to work, right? Well, there's kind of a problem here. It turns out that if you just put the image by itself like this, you're going to lose some of your options. Most notably, the main thing that you would want to do with this image is you might want to center it. And it turns out if the IMG tag is by itself, it cannot be centered. So what you need to do is you actually need to put a div around the image. So here I've added a div. I've given the div an ID, Venice div. And um, let's go ahead and add a style to it. Uh, I've added the style text align center. And now the image is aligned to the center. Remember, if you try and horizontally align the image by itself, it's not going to work. 
It's going to turn out we can vertically align the image. I'll show you that in a second, but we cannot horizontally align the image. This is a limitation because it turns out the IMG tag itself is not a block level tag. And the uh, horizontal alignment only works with block level tags. All right, let's take a look at the vertical alignment now. Let's go back to where I had that giant character once upon a time. So here it is right here. This is what we saw last time. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an ID because I wanna be able to give it a style rule. And uh, I've written a style rule for it. And previously the base of the O, base of the gigantic O was aligned with the baseline of the text. That's sort of the default setting. And now I've told it to vertically align with the middle and you can see that I am in fact aligned in the middle. There's also a top and a bottom vertical alignment you can play with. So that gives you an idea of what all your options are for images. So go out and make web pages with lots of colorful, fun images. I'll see you in the next video.